I'd like a motion to open the public portion of the Village of Bronxville Board of Trustees meeting for September 13th, 2021. So moved. And a second. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And please, if we could, the motion passes, and if we could stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. These chairs are a little squeaky. And tonight we welcome our special guests from our village library. Uh, we have our director, Greg Wurzilla, and our library board of trustees, President Margaret Major. So thank you both for coming and thank you for all you have done and are doing. You kept our library open and was really a model for a lot of other places and um, it was noticed by a great deal of the community with um, with great thanks and it comes from us as well so um, so Greg or Margaret or both tell us what's going on across the street um, well you stole my thunder because that was most of my report <laughs> there <laughs> uh, yeah So just to recap, uh, June of 2020, we were the second library to reopen our doors to the public. Um, the library up north beat us out by one day. Um, and since then, we've been open and resuming services as um, the governor has allowed us to. Um, all, once we, we lifted all the restrictions on June 15th of 2021, uh, we open, reopen completely. Uh, no more masks if you're not, if you're vaccinated. Uh, no more restriction on the hours. No more restrictions on um, indoor gatherings since we fall, low, fall beneath um, the larger venues. Uh, many libraries in Westchester Library System up until the summer have still have had a lot of restrictions. Some libraries didn't open until June. Um, and then even now as we speak, uh, some libraries have restrictions in their children's areas, especially masks. Um, and most libraries are not doing any indoor programming. We are doing indoor programming. We have some smaller programs right now and some of the larger programs are outside as the weather uh, allows us to. Interesting thing though, uh, our circulation since we reopened last June has gone through the roof. Circulation is a very good metric on the success of a library since the more people take out more books, the better you're doing. Um, Taking a three-year average of 2017 to 2019, we've increased our circulation by almost 20% over those three years average. And a year, a year to year basis, we've had our best numbers since 2013. So people are just, just coming back and they're very appreciative and they love being there. Um, even though you know, the worst is over, uh, with, you know, except for the Delta variant, even today, people are still coming in and expressing their appreciation for us being open and how we've handled it. Um, another thing we're uh, approaching now is a strategic plan. Every library has to do one every five years in New York State. Uh, it often starts with a survey. So over the summer, a survey went out uh, to the people of Bronxville. Um, and, uh, access to the survey was made through our webpage, through Twitter, through Facebook, through Instagram, uh, through your website, I believe, uh, private email list, and our newsletter. Um, and we received a lot of responses, 824 responses. To put that in perspective, Scarsdale did theirs two years ago, and they're three times the size, and they've received less responses to their survey. So people are interested in the library. 75% of the responses are from people in Bronxville. Um, we scored very high, 8.4 out of 10, and there might have been some confusion there because you were asked to score one from, from one to 10 and then write a comment. And some of the comments that spoke very highly, the library put a one. So I think they <laughs> yeah. got confused. So I think the 8.4 is you know, probably an 11. Um, the highest uh, 
use of the library, according to the survey, was our books and the building itself, followed by programming. So people still read. People come in to sit in the library and read. People take out the books. We have a very strong collection that's updated every day. 70% um, of the respondents frequent the library either monthly or sooner, which is interesting because you, know, you can take a book out for a month and it's an automatic renewal, so you really don't have to come back for two months, but people come back sooner than that. So that means we're providing a good service to the people of Bronxville. Uh, there are very high marks for the staff in the building. Um, some of the comments uh, as for wants, they wanted to see better use of the outdoor space. So in the immediate response to that, we started um, scheduling more outdoor programming as weather permits, and we've added an access, Wi-Fi access point and now broadcast out onto the lawn over there, because a lot of people like to sit out there during nice weather. So that's one extra service we're providing. Um, other requests are for more hours, obviously, more advertising for the programs, which are very well attended as is, and of course more parking, which is a problem all over the village. Uh, there was also uh, an opportunity for people to express um, some comments about the library. There was many, many very, very positive comments. I'm just going to share three with you. Uh, please thank the staff members on my behalf for helping keep Bronxville Library open during COVID-19. Perhaps the village, Bronxville Village and the Westchester Public Library System should organize an event to thank them in person. They should deserve to give them a special reward. Ruth Walter uh, offered a certificate of appreciation for that. Uh, we, school age children and I, have made weekly visits to the library and have been impressed with everybody who works on the second floor children's section main checkout desk. One of the major benefits is we appreciate the residence Bronx it was a library that remained open no matter what. I can't thank you enough. And finally, this is a good one. Good for you for staying open. I'm a doctor, and I think all the precautions you had in place were just great, just right, protected your staff and the public, and led to a sense of normalcy for my kids. It was so great to be able to come into the library with masks, check out books, so important. I'm really looking forward to when some of the program can return, or we can hang out a little bit in the library again before checking out our books. We love the library. And then finally, uh, just a brief uh, update on the facilities. I received a call today from Amy Paulin. Uh, she confirmed um, the grant award, uh, an award of a grant I got last year, I applied for it last year to replace a couple fan call units in the attic. This was a call to confirm that yes, I did indeed get the, the grant of, in the amount of $8,535, which is half of the construction cost of the minor work we had done in the attic so that the village should be receiving, I believe 90% of the check soon, and the other 10% is when I um, send in the post-construction pictures once that portal reopens for that. Um, we have another small uh, HVAC project on, on the books. It was approved last week by the uh, library board. It's connect all those new fan call units to the new building management system uh, located in the basement. The old building management system is on a computer that's failing and that building management system is no longer supported. So I just applied for another state construction grant to cover half those costs and there is a lot of money this year in that pot, so hopefully uh, it will be approved. Uh, of course, you know, the unfortunate thing is, is 21 years ago during the renovation, everything was replaced at once. Uh, there's still more work to be, to be done. Um, we're trying to parse it out as best we can. We're trying to look for other revenue streams to help reduce the tax burden on the good people of Bronxville. So we're trying our best. Um, we're always, we're always looking, but like, again, some, some extra work needs to be done. Um, you know, uh, with the, SAM, the potential of the SAM grant and the other grants that I've gotten to help construction costs, we've gotten over $270,000 in grants in the last two years. And like I said, I just put in for another $13,000, $12,500. So we're, we're trying. We're, we're trying to do our best. So um, any questions? Any questions, trustees? No, we've just been so impressed how you um, managed to open, and as that one doctor said in your comments, with yeah. all the proper safety precautions. And um, it's wonderful. I love hearing that your numbers are up so high. That's, that's just encouraging on uh, so many levels. And frankly, it's a testament to all of you that people want to go to the library. Yeah. So. We have great staff, and they love working here. Clearly. Clearly. Um, hey, Greg. Oh, 
I'm sorry. Could I just ask a question on the Wi-Fi? Is is it an open system? So if you were just around the library and it's you could get into it, or do you need a password? How does it work? No, there's just a. Um, you're now about to connect to the Bronx Public Wi-Fi. Click yes to accept the terms of right. services. Right, and it, it kind of is a perimeter around the building, or just on one side? Uh, just on the side over here with the lawn, and right. it does go off late at night, so you're not going to have people sitting there at two in the morning. Right. You know, so <laughs> there are timed hours for that. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah. No, I, I just wanted to uh, welcome Mark. Right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Mary. I just wanted to add that um, one thing uh, Greg didn't mention was the teen room which um, was designed by Sarah Underhill and funded by the Friends of the Library. And that is, I think, 95% done it, or 100%? Waiting for, one, yeah. Waiting for one more piece of furniture. But um, if you have a chance to go over to the library and check it out, it's really terrific. And uh, I think you'll love it. I know um, the staff loves it, Greg loves it, and I've been hearing that you've been getting um, quite a bit more teen traffic in there too. So um, the, the furniture is very flexible. So it's a great space for young people to get together and do their work. So go check that out. And um, I also just want to mention that uh, we, we, our staff is unionized and um, there will be labor contract negotiations coming up in the next four to six months. So, so that'll be happening. Um, and last but not least, I just want to express that the uh, Board of Trustees at the library have tremendous confidence in Greg. Um, he's really proven himself to be a terrific um, library director. He's been with us for over five years now, and um, his experience running um, a big building for a small library really benefits us tremendously. Um, the staff thinks very highly of Greg. The staff is happy. The board um, has a lot of confidence in Greg, as I said. So just wanted to share that with all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Greg, I'd just like to, to express my appreciation for you being here. We're so lucky to have you with your commitment to the library, but also your past experiences with systems and um, uh, real estate system. So uh, with a huge project we did over there last time, you were a huge contributor to that. Uh, so we're enormously fortunate to have you and your toolbox of skills that you bring to the village. So thank you. Can, can I just ask, um, to, to what, if there, is there any one particular factor that you think contributed to the uh, increase in circulation over the last year beyond COVID? And do you expect to keep that going next year? Yeah, I was, I was quite surprised that as more libraries started to open, that our circulation numbers didn't dip. I, th I think it's a combination of things that's, that arose from COVID. I think, you know, people, after being stuck in their houses for so long and, and doing everything virtual, they wanted to get out. And, and, you know, one of the things they rediscovered <coughs> was the library and actually holding a physical book in their hand. You know, um, and, you know, I have, a, I had, Christine Uchel, the head of reference, she does a phenomenal job with collection development. I mean, something's out there that she thinks is going to be um, of interest to Bronxville, we get it right away. You know, it's, it's a lot of it is the staff, you know, and, and as people come in and they realize what a beautiful building we have and all it has to offer, just it, the war gets around. It's, it's just become such a draw again. Thank you. Margaret, is there any way to get the wonderful word out about the teen room? Do you think maybe an article in the paper? Or I just think people would love to see that, um, that we have a new spot for teens to come read, relax, think. I agree. And um, we do have some PR plans. So we, have, we actually have PR um, committee on the, on the trustees, and that's headed by Josh Rucci. So there'll be some things coming out from him, and I know the friends are also planning a ribbon cutting, which you will be a big part of. So we'll be we'll be talking it up and showing it off and getting the word out much more um, aggressively than we have, which we really haven't done anything yet. And that's because we were waiting for it to be 100% right. complete. So, so you'll be hearing from us. Thank you. And thank you for your leadership. You have been involved in the library since I've known you, so. Uh, All libraries, library, yes. high school library too. Yeah, no, I love the library, so. Yes. 
Thank you. Any other questions for our library except a huge thank you from all of us. So thanks. All right, we've gone to the mayor's report and just saying good evening and welcome back to uh, kind of the new year in Bronxville for village government. Um, sadly, what's usually a very positive time of year that has been clearly overshadowed by the devastation caused by the flooding last week. Um, I just want residents to know that everyone at Village Hall is here to help them out in any way, so call with, with any questions. Um, Mr. Palmer, correct, we continue to pick up uh, flood-related debris. We just cannot pick up construction materials or products like uh, paint cans. Um, we continue to work with every agency, county, state, federal, to try to solve, frankly, most importantly, the situation near the Bronx River. Uh, so many of you have called me or texted me about dredging, um, and I heard today from the county um, deputy county executive uh, who said, and this is his words, the county is Ken Jenkins. The county does not have a position for or against dredging the Bronx River. We have not dredged for some time. I'm checking the status of several projects in the Bronx River Reservation, specifically those dealing with flood mitigation. We'll get that list to you as soon as I can. So basically the question of flooding, uh, dredging is neither a an up or down at the county level. So certainly something that um, we will continue to, um, to have a conversation. Um, in a bit of, I have to say a little bit of irony, we had been focusing on the west side infrastructure issues and had already put out a bid for the cleaning and televising of the sanitary sewer lines this summer and the bids will be opened this week. The project um, will certainly be going forward. Um, just keeping a final word on the flooding issue, I just have to thank the staff um, for tireless efforts, long hours, weekends, helping out with the cleanup, and um, everybody pitched in. And honestly, a special thank you to the residents, especially those affected by the flood for their patience and um, graciousness during some very trying times. Um, and a thank you, I watched their neighbors come to their homes, uh, helping them out, and I think it just cemented this village's reputation as a community that comes together in the good times and also the tough times. Uh, turning to um, some positive notes for the fall, we had undertaken, I would argue, an unprecedented number of projects to enhance the, um, primarily the walkability and pedestrian friendly atmosphere of the village. Uh, we spent hundreds of thousands of dollars um, repairing curbs, sidewalks, cleaning them, fixing uh, pathways, roads. Um, and we also put in two grants um, to enhance the safety, uh, most specifically at the Midland and Pondfield Road intersection right out here, as well as the West Side Circle. Uh, again, just to help our pedestrians um, move in those two kind of choke points more safely. Our DPW garage was also finished on time, on schedule, um, and on budget, which is probably most important, and we're currently paving uh, the street behind us. Um, I just, those are just a few highlights um, and I will write in the next few weeks in the paper more specifics on the projects that we're undertaking 
this fall. And I think you would agree we have so much more to do and it's represented, frankly, by tonight's uh, meeting agenda. And my final word is now that everyone's back in town, try to uh, re-engage and remember our wonderful merchants. They are still not over the hump in many ways and could so use your support and patronage. Thank you. Village Administrator, what did I forget? Uh, just, a, just a couple other items that I just wanted to follow up on, Mayor, on your comments on, uh, on Hurricane Ida. And uh, just to, uh, to thank the entire village team, of course, the police department had some uh, heroic efforts. Uh, the DPW employees have worked tirelessly picking up debris. We just ask that everyone uh, try to be patient as soon as they pick up uh, a lot of those personal belongings that suffered water damage, additional items get placed at the curb. Um, they, we actually are picking up the, what we call the C and D, the construction and demolition material. However, it needs to be kept separate and it can't be commingled with all the other uh, personal belongings that people put out to the curb. And we apologize for that, but the, um, we have to send our items to specific transfer stations in the county, and they have uh, requirements that items be kept separate. So if you see items that haven't been picked up, we will get to it. We, we just also ask that you try to put those items out that um, were disposed of uh, as a result of uh, water damage, uh, and we ask that you be, be be patient. If there are other items that you can postpone picking up, other items that you were going to do over the course of a year or what have you, uh, we ask that you uh, put those items off. And the mayor and board, I know I was trying to keep you updated on the homes that are out. Again, our, our, my heart goes out to, on behalf of all of us to the residents of Parkway Road. Unfortunately, even as of this evening, there are still several properties that are without electrical service. Uh, and although one should be coming on tomorrow, which will leave us with three homes that still have no electrical service. And unfortunately, so for any Parkway Road residents that are, are listening, or if you know our neighbor that still is without power, uh, the, the building inspector came out, uh, of course, throughout the event, came in multiple times uh, over the holiday weekend to meet with uh, Con Ed and uh, the electrical inspector electricians, because unfortunately, in some instances, the water damage was so great that uh, the electrical meter had to be pulled, if you will, uh, till Con Ed could get verification uh, from the building inspector, who required verification from the village's third party electrical contractor, who required verification that the electrician did what he had to do. So there were multiple steps, but we moved as quickly uh, as we could. And there are three properties we, and when I checked with the building inspector earlier, that we have not heard from the property owners on. So uh, I'm a little concerned about that. Uh, but we're, um, we're getting there. We appreciate everyone's patience. Believe me, we absolutely care about every uh, resident in the village. And again, later on in the agenda is the board's consideration of applying for county assistance to revisit or to look at that whole corridor, and that's because um, we do care about uh, the impact on Parkway Road and the other areas. And for that matter, um, I think One Stone Place, which was hit terribly hard, they have an electrical generator that's being brought in as we speak, so I think they're going to get that up and running temporarily. Uh, the building where Rosie's is located has actually had um, what they call a fire watch individual on to make sure so we could continue to operate them with electrical service. They have someone who's there to um, observe if um, there was any changes. So we were trying to assist in every way we can. Uh, and then, of course, you've been in touch, obviously, with the repair uh, businesses. So, but um, I did just again want to thank the DPW out there with sweeping. And for that matter, on Lower Melbourne today, we did have our um, subcontractor out cleaning out the catch basins again. Uh, so if residents on Parkway Road are concerned about that, yes, those areas took a massive amount of debris from the Bronx River, and we did get uh, Cook uh, out with his uh, backhaul to clean out those catch basins along, um, along Paxton and Lower Milbourne. So that's, uh, that's ongoing. And, and I just also wanted to give a big thanks to the, um, our most professional firefighters, um, the, the Fire, East Chester Fire Department was just phenomenal. The captains were wonderful. 
um, so polite and immediately met with, um, with us to uh, make sure that residents could get their pump outs prioritized. Uh, so these are the things that uh, people just need to know that are getting done. That being said, I just wanted to, you know, I'm analyzing the water data with the engineers. This was uh, by any measure an unprecedented event in that if you can just imagine that, yes, uh, over six inches of rain fell, but more than 77% of that, those six inches fell in a 120 minute period. That is, um, more than double in that time frame that was uh, planned for when they actually constructed the flood pump system for the, uh, for the school. Uh, total amounts, not so uh, dissimilar in terms of the quantity of over six inches of rain, but what the engineers are telling me is this was closer to a 200 to 500 year flood event when you measure the that 77% of over six inches fell within a two hour period. Um, so with that being said, uh, residents who did suffer water damage in other places have been reaching out to us and uh, there are things that homeowners can do. And I, I think even on a countywide basis, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna provide some guides that homeowners can put um, give them some specifications for dry wells that they, uh, that they uh, can consider. But, um, and I know there's been other flooding for, for some homeowners from some other events, but given this most recent one, I just thought that number was, was absolutely staggering and is pale, makes the 2007 event that was the, the standard for the school um, when measured that short amount of rainfall in that period of time, just, uh, just unprecedented. Um, the only other thing I just wanted to mention is uh, appreciate everyone's patience on the gas projects. Most of them we got done. Uh, what's just still underway is the installation of the gas line down Vine Street, and that was about 75% done today. So um, by the end of the week, I anticipate that gas line will be uh, entirely in, and then we'll be able to have that road repaved to appreciate everyone's patience on, on Vine Street. Uh, and then they're also working on connecting residents on that set on Locust. Uh, Locust and Wood End is, um, is still ongoing. And that's all I wanted to mention, sir. Thank you. Oh, that's just all. <laughs> yeah, that's just all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when, when, I know in addition to all of that, you've also been working with the, um, with the restaurants downtown about um, kind of systematizing and updating some of their outdoor spaces. Do you get the sense that m most of them want to continue with their outdoor spaces through the fall and winter? Um, uh, excellent question. And actually, on my last email that I sent out, I only uh, I only heard from one uh, only heard from one restaurant. But I'll probably send a, I'll probably send another reminder out. I suspect they're all um, they're all uh, impressively busy as well. But again wanted to and, and really what I was also looking for is we wanted to get certainly updated insurance information and some of the counts in terms of the tables and the seating and what's on sidewalk versus the street has uh, changed from time to time so I wanted that all updated so if there are any restaurant owners out there please send that information in and I'll, I'll report back to the board but I suspect the majority of them will certainly uh, want to continue uh, into the fall, but given a couple of the incidents that we had, I, I think it was important that we put out there that we really need to move towards uh, the electric heaters uh, versus the propane, propane units. And I know that might be uh, a little bit of a hardship for some restaurants, and we can work through that together. Again, you know, we're, we're here to help. Is that a standard that's being adopted by other um, municipalities, elimination of gas heaters? Um, yes, uh, yes, and it's uh, and it specifically comes as a recommendation from the building inspector uh, and also uh, the fire inspectors. And we, we have had, uh, truth be told, not all the restaurant owners are maintaining those uh, heating units as well. And we have had incidents, as people might recall, uh, where uh, one of the uh, glass windows for one of the storefronts was smashed and it was out for a really extended a period of time. You think it would be very simple to replace um, a storefront window, but even that kind of supply, not so easy to get for a glass of that thickness, and it was damaged as a result of the uh, propane heaters. So there are reasons for that madness. Um, but. Thank you, Jim. 
All right, I need a motion to approve our minutes from the July 22nd, 2021 executive session and the work session, as well as July 22nd, 2021 regular meeting with some minor non-material changes. So moved. And a second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Mary Ann, as always. All right, I need a motion to open a public hearing for Local Law 10-2021, a local law to amend the code of the Village of Bronxville by amending the leaf blower ordinance. Do I have a motion? I'll move it. And second. a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, this is where um, trustees, we all comment and then we open it up to anyone here tonight who wants to talk on this particular issue. Um, just as background, I want to say this was the biggest complaint during COVID that came to um, Village Hall because people working at home, frankly, had a really hard time not only concentrating, but most importantly on Zoom calls. Um, and given that so many of our properties abut two and three properties in the yard, it was a constant source for people. Um, we brought the idea forward to our incredibly active Green Committee, and I thank everyone here tonight. Um, I see the chairman here, uh, Ellen Edwards, and the former chairman, Mary Liz Mulligan, um, they did the most comprehensive study of um, communities, did a public survey, uh, meaning village survey, and I have to say the um, village survey was overwhelmingly in favor of doing something to alleviate um, uh, the noise and the um, particulate matter. And, um, and just to put in a framework, I think, in fairness, the Green Committee would agree on the gradient. We're probably moving towards where many of communities like ours have gone already, quite frankly, and are going. I think the spectrum is from East Chester, where there's no ban, to Larchmont, which next year is going to ban them in their entirety for the entire year. and. Um, and we're kind of um, in the middle moving um, with a lot of other like-minded communities. So um, just want to put that in the framework and a huge thank you to the Green Committee and frankly the residents for galvanizing this board to, um, to rethink um, because quite honestly we were at the forefront with Hastings over a decade ago of, of putting in some restrictions and we simply hadn't revisited them until um, till now, thanks to the committee and the residents. So just a little framework. Trustees, any thoughts before I open it to anyone in the audience? I, I just wanted to say, yeah, again, reiterating what, what Mary said, um, you know, I think we, we spent quite a lot of time over the last months um, with the immense help of the Green Committee, you know, looking at all the various, because it's a complex issue. So we were looking, you know, talking to residents, talking to the landscapers, you know, un trying to understand the technology of the electric alternatives to really, you know, weigh all the various options um, and to study what the other communities had done. So I think we've, you know, the, the alternatives that the Green Committee presented were um, very well thought out, very measured. Um, the option that um, we are potentially voting on is an option that we also think is, is, is quite um, understandable by the, the residents. Um, we have enforcement mechanisms. Um, there's a potential that it, we can um, you know, tighten it later if, we, if, if it, we wanted to take an incremental approach so that um, we can see how it, uh, you know, how it works in the real world, but it doesn't mean that, there, that we are um, limiting any um, tightening of the ban at a future point. <coughs> and I nope. might add that, excuse me, that, that um, electric blowers can be used all through the year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and so, and if you summarize where the, the 
where we're going to propose is two thirds of the year they're prohibited, one third of the year you can use um, gas blowers. Yeah, four months, two months in the fall, two months in the spring. And uh, touching on uh, Helen's comments that we want to see how this works, and I am personally uh, want to avoid positions where we have to back off them. Um, I don't want to retreat on this issue. Um, I'd like to, I think this is a real issue that needs to be addressed. Uh, working from home during COVID made that a, <laughs> had to make sure I scheduled certain Zoom calls when I knew the neighbor's um, landscaper wasn't coming. So it, it is a real issue. Um, and, but I want to make sure that we can be m moving forward on this at all times and not uh, have to be forced into a retreat mode. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to re-echo uh, all the comments made by my fellow trustees, uh, and in particular, really the outstanding work of the Green Committee. Uh, I, I found it an educational experience to read the material, particularly about the amount of pollution generated by leaf blowers uh, in terms of emissions, let alone from a, a noise perspective and uh, uh, really just, I've said it before, I'll say it again, it was just, just first rate. And I thought that notwithstanding how committed the Green Committee was to wanting to have a tighter regulation, uh, the proposals that they submitted were, were really across a spectrum. They were not ideological, they clearly reflected wanting to give a meaningful option uh, to the trustees, uh, which I think has also made our process uh, much easier. Uh, I would just want to comment that on the violations provision of the code, uh, as drafted, it provides that individuals violating the code, landscapers violating the code, and property owners uh, where there's a violation are all potentially responsible. And I think that that is reasonable because uh, homeowners, I think, share a burden with landscapers in working together to understand what the law is. All uh, property owners would love their properties to be immaculate and, and whatnot. Uh, you know, certain properties may not be quite as immaculate uh, with uh, electric leaf blowers as they were before with gas powered leaf blowers but I think that's just a compromise we can all uh, live with if there's an extra leaf here or there and if we go ahead and adapt the change I just hope that that everyone in the community will will cooperate willingly in uh, in making a smooth transition to uh, the enforcement regime and uh, as Trustee Andrew Hill said we'll see how it goes uh, you know maybe it will be tightened maybe it'll stay the same uh, but I have a feeling that uh, the time is overdue for doing something here and again thanks to the Green Committee for their work on this okay now I would like to open it to anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this particular amendment and if you would just come up and give your name um, we would so appreciate it. Good evening. I'm Dr. Stephen Schaefer. My wife and I live at 274 Pondfield Road uh, uh, here in Bronxville. We've lived there now for <coughs> 29 years, which is somewhat unusual in this village since people have their children and leave immediately. Mm -hmm. I think as many of you know, I'm falling apart here too. Huh? <coughs> I come to you with kind of a different background. One, because we've lived there so long, my wife and I actually take care of our property. And I'll, uh, you know, if you can tell me people that have property like we do, I'm just bringing this picture to show you. This is our house, 274 Podfield. It's that rather gorgeous Tudor. It's on about an acre and a half, okay? That is a hell of a lot of work. And for the first year, for first years we lived here, we did everything ourselves. And we were so delighted when we found a landscaper that could take care of that property. And actually, Felix is right there, Panzarella, 
and I asked him to come. And one of the things I did, and my wife did, is we talked with him directly. So we have been in front of that house so much for so many years, and we really know what it means to clean up, you know, an acre and a half of leaves, sort of crap, and we know what the street is like. You can X out crap if you like. And <laughs> I, I, I could be stronger, because you're going to find out why in a moment. Um, but it, it's very concerning that that's happening. And talking to landscapers, they really have a problem here. And, and, and looking at the scientific evidence that was presented, I'm, I ha I'm an academic physician. I've been on study sections at the National Institute. I've written easily 200 papers, so I have some competence in reading uh, scientific literature. I think overall, Jennifer, you guys did a great job, okay? And we talked, in fact, Jennifer encouraged me that I should come and talk with you. I, I think overall the document is quite valid. There is a concern, and I really didn't think about it, of pollution from the blowers. The decibel level, the sound pressure level, which is produced by these blowers, is uh, the relationship is what's called the inverse square law. So if you're right at the blower, you're going to have so many decibels, and if you're 50 feet away, it's going to be inversely squared to it. So there's that factor we have to put in. So the difference in property in the village here is immense. I have a very large piece of property. You probably can hear, I don't know if you can hear, um, the landscaper at the back of my property with whatever they're using, or some people closer here to where we are right now and around the school have very small pieces of property. So I think that presents a challenge for this law. So I'll make that as point number one. Point two is that the leaves where I live, again, which is 274 Pondfield Road, I am Let's see, I guess it would be uh, west of Locust Lane and east of Argyle, where that long hill is going down. And what prompted me originally to talk to you was that during leaf falling season, and particularly in the ice, that is a real challenge area. And that is tested to by the fact of what goes on there. Um, we have had police cars, not so much now that they have four-wheel drive, tr chase people up Pondfield Road from Locust Lane to somewhere around Argyle, and in fact have gone through the wall around our property. That was one time. We've had pe uh, people go down the road, and you'll notice where the Masterton Island is. The telephone pole was probably replaced multiple times. There's no longer a a bail box, drop-off box, because I think that either you know, I don't know if the village or the um, mail service or whatever got tired of replacing it because it was launched so many times by cars going down that. The telephone pole has been crooked multiple times and replaced. Um, you'll see we have rocks up partially around our, our in front of our uh, uh, parking strip because people decide it's fun to run over the, the uh, curb. I think the conclusion to that is that is a dangerous area. I will then give you a further example of why I believe it's dangerous. And I think this needs to go into our how we look at the leaves and their removal. Because again, as a physician, there's much good in what Jennifer said. I have some questions, concerns that I don't quite find, you know, find the, the problem the leaf lower uh, causes as concerning at the safety problem. People in that area go up and down the street at high rates of speed. There's no question about it. You can't knock over telephone poles, walls, fences, lawns, you name it. And if you want to talk to the police, I was there this morning and I did talk with them. I'd be happy to verify that. So what is now immediately relevant? About 10 days ago, my wife and I were walking our English cream golden retriever, <laughs> Lily, <laughs> the most wonderful dog. Lily's dead now, and I'll explain why. Um, and a car decided to go down uh, Pondfield Road and made a right turn between my wife and I walking in the crosswalk between the island and the upper part of the uh, street, uh, the house that's immediately 
um, I guess it would be west of the island, okay? The car passes so close and so fast that we couldn't see who was driving it. The uh, driver's side mirror hit my wife. I didn't know what passed by between me, and we couldn't even see the license plate or anything else because the car did not make any effort to stop until it came to the stop sign at uh, Elm Rock, and that wasn't even a complete stop. So that was originally my point in talking about the safety issue. Our dog, who we dearly loved, and was a wonderful dog, and many of you may have seen her. She was really gorgeous. She was a year and a half English cream golden retriever, weighed 84 pounds. On Friday afternoon, her daughter was playing with her, and she walked into the street, which she never does, about four feet. A car came around the corner at a high rate of speed, hit the dog, threw her onto the, the um, parking strip, and never stopped. All we had to prove who it was, and my, and my daughter tried to chase her. She did not stop. The person behind her did stop, we didn't know it was a her, we couldn't even see them, they were moving so fast. Did stop and offered to help my daughter, and the, and the dog survived the initial um, impact, but the, it was so uh, violent, the license plate fell off the car, and the... Um, Excuse me, could you just fell. make sure that you're bringing this around to our leaf blowers? I am, I, I'm I, terribly I, sorry about your, you are your dog. I just want to bring this around to our leaf blower. Uh, I will. I, I promise. And also, I'd like to remind you, we, we have, I think this is your first time in a meeting, we do have a three-minute limit for oh. speakers. Well, I'm just about finished. I'll thank you very that. much. And you can tell why I'm somewhat upset. I know you are, and I'm so sorry I, about I, that. And I thank you, Okay. So here's the conclusion. I think we should view the leaves on that street as a hazard and, and leave the landscapers a little bit of option if necessary because leaves don't f always fall at the same time. And then second, in talking to the police department, we need to have better signage at that part I'm describing. They have recommended lowering the speed there and they've recommended these traffic signals that we have where you, you, you indicate how fast you're going. Because I was in front of my house doing some work on the driveway yesterday. And people cursed at us for being there. They want to go fast and something's wrong. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Can you say to the that we were going to give some flexibility on, you know, um, Yeah, that's a good football. point. So I, we were going, we, we just talked about um, that uh, a little earlier about, you know, if the leaf season happens to be a little later one year, we're not going to be, you know, super draconian with that uh, October 15th, uh, you know, cutoff. So it, w it will have flexibility, you know, for, for different weather events. And if there is a big storm of any kind, you know, that certainly is going to suspend um, any limits. So we do want to maintain that flexibility. That is shocking. Thank you. Yes. One of well, our Green Committee members. I'm Joan Marlowe Golan. I'm a member of the Green Committee, but I was not a member of the team that put together the report, but I want to thank Ellen and the other people who did. Uh, it's an issue near and dear to my heart, and they did a, a, a great job. Um, and I want to thank everybody on the board, and uh, Mayor Marvin and Helen, uh, especially who are members of the Green Team. I know how supportive you were. Uh, this is a matter of life and death. It's not a question of a nuisance. Uh, one hour of operating a, a, a gas-powered leaf blower is equivalent to the pollution of a thousand miles driven by a car. And the people most affected are children, the elderly, the people who are not fortunate enough to live in, in Bronxville that, that operate uh, uh, these, these leaf blowers. And uh, it's really a question of saving lives. I mean, frankly, if it were up to me, I would just ban these instruments of death forever, everywhere. But it's not, but this, this is a great start, uh, at least eight months, and I hope you will uh, uh, 
consider that. You have all the facts, all the, the health organizations, including uh, the American Lung Association, Heart Association, CDC, uh, Ellen and her team have, have uh, laid it out. And I, I just, you know, everybody is concerned about the noise. And by the way, the noise contributes to deafness. Yeah. Um, but if you have any, if anybody in this room has any doubts, just Google gas-powered leaf blowers, health dangers, and you'll be amazed at how much you'll, you'll bring up. And thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Okay. I'm Desiree Betzel, and I'm a member of the Green Committee. And uh, Ellen has done so much work. I'm the radical wing of the Green Committee. <laughs> <laughs> and she was nice enough to ask me to come here tonight. Mayor Marvin, I just want to thank you for all the times you've heard me out. When I've said this complaint, even before people started with COVID, they're, you know, the right. Johnny come lately's. I've been complaining for years. Yes, <laughs> I you continue. have. I, thank, thank, you, Mark. <laughs> thank you for acknowledging me. I also want to give my condolences to the people who lost their dog. Yeah. Uh, a, a horrifying thing. But I would, and, and I want any safety to stop that from happening to, again, to be in, implemented. But I would just counter that leaves don't kill people. Uh, enforcing laws save people. So I live on Kensington Road, and I know, you know, the speed limit there is not what many people drive at. But without enforcement of that, they will continue to have a good time speeding down the road in Christchurch, nursery school is there. I, I'm going off the topic. But I just want to say, I, I'm sitting here, I'm not usually here, I don't come to the meetings, but I'm looking at all the beautiful paintings, most of which are nature related, very bucolic. I'm seeing the ocean above Mayor Marvin. I see the trees and the cows. There are no leaf blowers in the pictures. <laughs> and <they're, laughs> although they could be modified, I understand that. <laughs> I, I'm just saying many of us live in Bronxville because we wanted that feeling. We knew there wouldn't be cows here, but we knew there was a quiet community, a respectful community. What I noticed from this meeting is the manners and decorum. And there's, a, there's an equivalent to that in nature. If you live in a place where you're not free to open your window on a day you want the breeze or to hear the birds, there's something wrong with that. This doesn't even get to the health and the environmental damage. Uh, Jim, Mr. Mr. Palmer, hearing you speak about the damage from this last storm, this is all connected. These aren't two topics. Ch times are changing, and the village has got to be on the forefront we have to be at least as proactive as Larchmont, <laughs> just for the sake of competition, for God's sake. <laughs> we live in Bronxville, so let's do it big. Let's do it right. Let's keep these pictures relevant, not just like a thing of the past. Um, and please, please do it. Please, I know this new law will be an improvement, but consider a total ban. I know many of you here are old enough to remember the rake. <laughs> there? All right. The rake. Of course, there's an economic issue. I, I know the landscapers are represented here, and I don't want to, uh, you know, be too polarizing. But a lot of this is an economic issue. How much to pay a guy if he has a rake in his hand? How much to charge a customer if they can just blow it? And I'll end with a particular example. I live across the street from the beautiful Bronxville Villas, which is a lovely place, and lovely people live there. My new neighbors, I'm at the terrace, the old house, the old little townhouses. But they want to be part of the community. They want their property to look beautiful, and it does. So they hire people. I don't know if it's you. <laughs> but they hire people who do a lovely job. But economics, I look out the window sometimes, and there's three or four leaf blowers. And now they have one that isn't arm-waved. It's pushed like this, and the blowing's coming out. 
And sometimes I see these poor people with these mechanisms, and they're going like this to make the noise of production. They want to indicate to their customers they're doing the work. There's this much grass along Kensington Road with that property. There, it's not a field of leaves. You know, it's just something, it's the sound of work. And I think we have to take that into account. And thank you for listening to me all these years, Mayor Marvin. And tonight, I'm going to have to leave now. But I appreciate your having me. Okay. Thank you, Desiree. And I have to say, Desiree has been a point of such positive input. And um, it's a, a pleasure to interact with you, Desiree. I enjoy it. Yes. Anyone else like to speak? Yes. Another Green Committee member. <laughs> Another Hello. Green Committee member. Well, you've, you've heard a lot from other members, I assume, at this point. I'm sorry I was late. I was uh, managing grandkids. But um, I just want to support um, the vision you've already uh, worked on so hard with the information that you've had around restricting leaf blowers. We all are going to have to adapt. We can see that with these climate changes. Um, you know, the, the health uh, impacts the noise impacts that, you know, um, the damage to the environment and so forth. Uh, in order for us to reclaim our environment and deal with some of these weather issues, the flooding and everything, we have to change, you know, what's on the ground and, and what we're growing. So um, it is all interrelated. It's a small step. I know landscapers, um, you know, probably would rather not uh, limit, but Part of our research was that there are plenty of electric uh, blowers and battery-operated blowers that are almost as powerful. They're even hand-pushed ones these days. They're improving all the time. Um, and, um, you know, it's something that maybe this, this, at this point, falls more on landscapers, but homeowners should also be getting involved in really asking for in more environmentally sound maintenance of their property. So I uh, kudos to the trustees who've taken this seriously, um, and thank you. Thank you. OK, anyone new? Yes. Hi, good evening. Uh, I'm Justin Smith. Um, I'm not on the Green Committee. I've, I've never been to a meeting here. Uh, I'm not. I think the second prior speaker said she was a radical on this issue. Um, I had maybe thought about leaf blowers for 60 seconds in my life before I received an email message indicating that something was being considered. Um, and given two minutes reflection, um, by the way, I'm sorry I was late. I missed what everybody said, so I'm probably re reiterating pieces that were said by, by others. It seems on a minute's reflection to be obviously sensible. Carbon emissions, particulate emissions, noise emissions, residents, the workers themselves. It, it just seems, it, it, it seems to me like a no-brainer. So I just want to offer my support as just a member of the community. I live in Dusenbury Road. Uh, I support many of the other things. The gentleman who's, unfortunately, whose dog died, I would love. I have a son that walks to the school from the other side of 22. I'd love more sidewalks. I'd love slower speed limits. I'd love more stop signs, et cetera, et cetera. Great. But here we're talking about the leaf blowers. It all seems perfectly sensible. I understand there may well be concerns by operators, by landscapers. Uh, I don't know what the percentage is of residents of Bronxville that employ landscapers versus doing it themselves. I expect it to be very high. Uh, and I expect that, um, that costs of doing it another way would be passed on and Bronxville residents would primarily be absorbing those costs and they seem, it would seem to be costs well spent. So I applaud the initiative and I'm happy to see it going forward. Thank, thank you. you and thank you for coming tonight. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, just as a little clarification and Jim Palmer, make sure I'm correct that Unfortunately, the speed limits, you can have 20 in a school zone, 30 is New York State's lowest speed limit unless you can prove, sadly, accident data and you have to apply to the state legislature with the data, 
We have gotten years and years ago, Sagamore Road is 25. And that was the only place that the state um, deemed had, sadly enough, accident information to merit the, um, the lowering of the speed limits. So I think there's many of us up here who agree 30 in some neighborhoods is an awfully high speed limit, but unfortunately it's not in the purview of this board, the police department, or any of us to change it short of state legislation. So. Um, I'm, I'm not sure uh, exactly. I mean, there's there's data. There's very specific um, conditions. So, what, could you come to the microphone, please? Yeah. <clears throat> and then we may have to move on because we have a huge agenda tonight. So I apologize, I, and I'm well motivated. However, I, I thank Jennifer for work. Most of it, I do agree with. Period. Both from a scientific standpoint, which is the other. Um, I'm bringing this in. Trouble is that that street is a problem, and the police, I mean, I go and talk to the police chief, talk to the men that were on duty. When you have police cars going through uh, walls, when you have uh, mailbox in, uh, launched, you have the street signs constantly being run over, you have people going through walls, telephone poles, you name it. I don't know how that's reported but there should be, in order to help you, uh, enough of an inventory that there is a problem. I have talked with Mr. Palmer, and he did point out that there were two signs, I think, of some sort at one time. I couldn't see them, actually, because they were covered by branches, but there's now another one there. But the same problem is occurring. It occurred as of today. So I would say, beyond what we want to consider respiratory effects, sound pressure level, you name it, it is bad to see people die because we can't enforce a law that we should. And I don't know what else to tell you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak on the leaf blower issue? Yes, sir. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, Trustees. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. I, um, I didn't know much. Could you introduce yourself, please? Yes. My name is Larry Wilson. Uh, I'm a landscaper. I'm a landscape contractor here in uh, the village. Uh, I am also uh, the Government Affairs Chair of the New York State Turf and Landscape Association. New York State Turf and Landscape Association has been serving the landscapers of Westchester County in this region for over 60 years. We're based in Westchester. We have an office in White Plains. We have been a part of every community beautification effort uh, that was ever really brought to our attention that we knew about uh, over the decades. We've done uh, countless uh, Arbor Day tree plantings. Um, we endow scholarships to um, students of horticulture, and uh, we have uh, generally uh, been active in uh, the Westchester community for decades. So I'm here tonight to humbly and respectfully request that uh, you certainly choose option three out of the three options, but um, the dates uh, I'm not really sure if, uh, I understand why uh, you want to change the dates. And uh, certainly uh, I respect the Green uh, Committee, uh, the work that they've done. I have a few comments about that that, uh, that I'll save, but um, I, uh, I understand that you've been listening to, to those telling you that battery-powered blowers or a viable alternative. Um, I have had, had no success uh, with uh, battery-powered blowers. Uh, the batteries last maybe uh, 15 minutes. Uh, we cover a lot of ground, not only in Bronxville, uh, but uh, in uh, neighboring communities. We, we might 
um, service uh, over 20 uh, stops in uh, an average day. And um, the uh, electric blowers, I, I would need countless batteries. Uh, and the batteries um, scare me a little bit. You know, they're not supposed to be stored in, um, uh, you know, in temperatures that are over 110 or 115 degrees uh, in a van or a, a box truck in, in the middle of the summer. You have gas, gasoline, as well as uh, the batteries. If a battery should ever explode, it would be a disaster. So we've had our difficulties uh, with them. And of course, rakes. Uh, if you look at uh, you know an average property, certainly uh, I see Dr. Schaefer out there working. Um, uh, it uh, you you cannot effectively uh, service uh, a property that size with uh, an electric blower, <clears throat> or two electric blowers. <clears throat> I um, I tried to buy uh, an electric blower last week. Uh, it was uh, the mother of all electric blowers. It had a battery that I wear on my back like a, uh, like a backpack blower and then, uh, you know, a handheld unit that I carry around that's plugged in, okay? One manufacturer makes, uh, it's the steel company, the people that make the chainsaws. They told me that it's in their catalog, but they have no idea when that uh, machine will be available again. It was available, you know, for a while, I guess, in 2019, but um, you can't get them anymore. So now I'm forced uh, to use these, uh, these little uh, machines with plug-in batteries that are totally inadequate. So, you know, if the time comes when uh, I have to do a uh, spring cleanup with that little blower, uh, I, uh, I probably will not be able to do it uh, effectively. Or I'll spend so much time there that um, time is money. The, uh, the, the bills, uh, you know, would be, uh, would be astronomical. So uh, in looking at option three, uh, I see that you propose to uh, find the homeowner. And, you know, I can understand why you're leaning in that direction. So, sometimes I feel like some homeowners should be fined. But uh, in the end, I, um, I would have to digress uh, on that point. I, I don't, uh, I think it's draconian, really, uh, you know, uh, to start, uh, you know, handing out $250 tickets to uh, the people that pay uh, $60,000, $80,000 in taxes, uh, you know, because uh, somebody uh, used a leaf blower on their property. Um, I, I really don't know if that's uh, such a wise policy for you folks. I read uh, the 21-page report with great interest, and again, I have to commend the Green, uh, uh, the Green uh, Committee for, you know, compiling all that information. But, you know, I looked at the footnotes. Um, you know, I, I know that if I wanted to uh, do a study, and if I had enough time on my hands, you know, I could dig and uh, find uh, enough cor cor corroborating information to support whatever conclusions that I seek. So again, it was a monumental effort. I'm sure it took you a lot of time, but uh, I have uh, questions about it. And uh, certainly, uh, you know, um, the uh, surveys, especially the survey uh, uh, of landscapers, um, Mayor Marvin, I, I think I talked to you in July or August, and you, you, you told me that I should, uh, you know, uh, send comments, and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, again, we put the word out, uh, you know, to landscapers, but I, I didn't know that there was a survey underway, and I think that 23 respondents, uh, you know, we could have, I think that maybe you could have done a little better. 23 respondents isn't much. Uh, I know that, uh, I, I think you narrowed it down to 10, uh, 10 that responded, two of those were design build, uh, uh, one was a design build company, two were arborists, um, you know, uh, arborists are calling me every day now saying, what's going on in Bronxville, can, you know, are they going to take the blowers away, you know, now that uh, people, uh, uh, people know about this, uh, certainly they're asking a lot of questions. I, I even have a, uh, a a flyer that was sent to me, uh, you know, by one landscaper that he uh, plans to uh, 
to, to, to give to all his customers. And, uh, you know, this is something that's going around. You know, and it, it basically uh, uh, asks that uh, you not go forward with this. And um, it, it, everyone is listed, all the trustees, uh, Mr. Palmer yourself, and uh, I know that you are taking comments, I believe. And uh, so hopefully, you know, I, I mean, if you vote this in tonight, it's sort of like a, a moot point to, uh, you know, to start, uh, you know, uh, a asking our customers uh, f for comments. But uh, we certainly feel that uh, 10 respondents uh, is really, uh, there, there are a lot more really that would like to, uh, to weigh in. And I don't know um, about the homeowners either. I don't know where they came from or if they were apartment dwellers or if they were, you know, people that own property. I, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, it's all a big question mark. Could, could I just respectfully ask you, we, we limit everyone to three minutes. Right. Okay, I'm done. We have I'm a, a I just want to say that October 15th is unfair. Um, you know, it's not going to make a big uh, difference, uh, you know, in air pollution and snow. You know, d during the, uh, the the snow months, okay, you, you people can get hurt. That leaf blower, if, it, if it's uh, dry snow, if it's not wet snow, and I don't do snow, but... I know that in my own house I, I, I clean with the leaf blower. It does a wonderful job. You don't need salt. You don't need anything. So um, I appreciate that you uh, are a little flexible, uh, you know, on enforcement uh, for these dates. And I um, want to thank you again for uh, this hearing. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll speak again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else before I close the hearing? Okay, seeing no one, I need a motion to close our hearing. So moved. And a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. All right, Mr. Palmer, do you want to help us go forward with the new business? Trustees listening to, to everything we've heard and researched over months, almost a year now. Are you... Um, are you uh, willing to vote on this resolution upon closing of the public hearing? Yeah. Mayor, I'm, I'm prepared to go ahead, and I, I, I think we should. One can always make arguments for further delay in hearing further opinions, but I think that there has been plenty of public notice and opportunity to be heard. Uh, I greatly appreciate Mr. Wilson's comments, but they don't change my view that uh, we should go ahead and adapt the law. I think the, the proposal represents a compromise. It does give reasonable flexibility to use gas blowers for certain designated periods, two months in the fall and, and the spring. Uh, as I alluded to earlier, you know, some of us may just have to learn to live with less immaculate uh, yards, uh, much as people in the American Southwest may have to learn with having less grass because there's a water shortage. It's a small price to, uh, to pay in, in, in regards to the, uh, to the many other benefits of, of the statute. Uh, with regard to violations, I don't think it's anyone's intention on this board that uh, the village administrators start being in the business of handing out tickets left and right. We like to think that citizens comply with the law without having to be fined in order uh, to do so, but um, obviously you do need some teeth to be used with uh, with appropriate discretion. But uh, but certainly, I don't think anyone on this board views this as a money making venture. It's uh, it's a law in the greater public interest. So I I would I would move that we go ahead and uh, and vote on the uh, proposal before us. All right. Um, then do I have a motion to adopt local law 10 2021? I'm sorry. Do we have a second on that or I'm asking for a motion. Uh, oh, I, well, need I a made second. the motion. You made I, the I, motion. I so moved. Second. You, second. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Palmer. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Just as a little clarification, we're just joining 20 plus uh, communities in Westchester County of the 40 uh, or so. So we're hardly uh, revolutionary on this. And I think it's something that, um, you know, most communities are going in this direction. And I think we all, uh, gardeners, homeowners, are going to have to adapt accordingly. 
So. And I think the the Green Committee took a very, as, as um, Bill mentioned, a very uh, pragmatic approach to this, which I, I really appreciate. <clears throat> and I appreciate Mr. Wilson's comments and thank him for being here. Um, gas power blowers can be used for spring cleanup. Mm -hmm. They can be used for fall cleanup. Um, it's the time of year when we're, when we're not doing spring cleanup and, and the leaves aren't falling except in emergencies, which we can use blowers in a state of emergency. But the quality of life really does have to change when someone's come, when a landscaper's coming around with three leaf, leaf blowers on a Tuesday in June, there's to, it's just, it's too much. Um, but I, I really do think that this is, strikes a very reasonable balance and there are so many voices that are complaining about this that something has to be done. So um, I really appreciate the work you've done, appreciate the, all the work that my fellow trustees have put into this, particularly you, Helen, so thank you. Hear her. Um, and, but the work is just not quite over yet because uh, I think the next thing that is really gonna um, need to roll out and, and I, the Green Committee is already at the forefront of um, the whole educational effort around this yeah. to inform. Right. Communication is going to be very important. Yeah, yeah. So we've got, you know, now is, and that, why the timing is so important for, for all this, so we have enough time to prepare the residents and, um, you know, let people know what's going on, the rationale behind it, um, you know, whether we have to send out, you know, letters to every resident. We talked about you know, having a, a presence at the sidewalk sale, um, you know, giving leaflets out, or, and, mm -hmm. and so I think that's really the next um, step, and thank you all in, in advance for continued help on that. All right, Mr. Palmer, we have uh, new business item two. I need a motion to schedule a public hearing for local law 1121. It's a local law to amend the traffic and vehicle law of the Village of Bronx Hill, chapter 290, by restricting parking on and vehicular access to Palumbo Place. Do I have a motion to schedule the hearing? I'll move it. And a second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Palmer, can you give a quick overview on what the hearing um, would be about related to Palumbo Place. Sure, and, and just for clarification, that'll be for uh, Tuesday, October 12th at seven o'clock. Uh, will be when we'll have the hearing on that right after um, right after Columbus Day. And uh, the purpose of that hearing is for modifications to the vehicle and traffic chapter, specifically as it relates to Palumbo Place. Now, with the uh, DPW building nearing completion, we need to finalize. Um, traffic flow uh, and um, uh, and what's proposed is consistent with the limited through traffic that we have had on the street uh, certainly throughout the construction period uh, so again specifically as it relates to Palumbo Place and as we briefly discussed in our work session uh, in short where the limited through traffic right now is from east to west uh, it would be from uh, west to east. Uh, and as you had requested, we will, uh, I'll work on a layout, see if I can get a nice visual for everyone that also shows the continuation of the sidewalk and the pedestrian uh, and bike area. And then we will um, schedule a, um, a walkthrough. Could we also share um, uh, uh, the sort of uh, visual with the public so people have an idea of not only um, share it with us, but perhaps um, get it out there so the public can understand um, how Palumbo Place is going to work going forward. Sure. That's, okay. that's a big, yeah. that's a great idea. Just yeah. Because it's a little confusing given, you know, all, all that we have going on back there. Right, and it's been closed because of the construction and now the construction's finishing up and it's being paved. But, right. you know, the thought of adding a new um, bike path and a, new, a better sidewalk and, you know, lots of in and outs with the right. yeah, new traffic. Quite frankly, it's been everything over the years. Yeah, right? everything. <laughs> it's been everything. All righty, so we scheduled that public hearing, and now we need a resolution authorizing um, 
uh, some building management system upgrades for the library's uh, HVAC system, which Greg um, alluded to in the library's um, presentation. Uh, Mr. Palmer, do you? I, no, I, no, I think, I think we yeah, just we move forward with what is suggested to upgrade the system. So it's 28,000, Mayor? Yes, right. exactly. Right, right. and that's coming from the library on a signed fund balance. Yep. Right. If the money is there, we just have to approve the usage. Um, so do I have a motion to go forward? So moved. And a second. a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. I, just, I think with the, our library director, um, given the, the big project that we had a couple years ago, I, he convinced me that he is uh, rubbing every nickel hard. Yeah, and uh, he understands it. This is not a foreign language to him. So I'm confident that that this work needs to be done. It's being done with good value. I do too. All right, Mr. Palmer, do you want to? You were intricately involved in Resolution D, authorizing um, an increase in um, salary for our full time non-representative staff who are absolutely terrific. They are. Uh, everyone continues to do an amazing job. Uh, as you know, this 2.5% uh, <clears throat> this, uh, uh, increase would cover the, uh, the non-union personnel, essentially 14, uh, 14 employees. What I didn't mes mention in the work session, it does also um, uh, include the police chief, since he's not part of a collective bargaining unit. And the board has, had also agreed some time ago to also include the village justices in that 2.5% increase uh, to ensure that they received, um, if you will, a COLA increase, a cost of living increase, since uh, we had determined that they had started to fall, um, uh, fall back uh, or fall behind relative to their peers. So, um, yeah, great village uh, team, just like the library staff. They've... Um, uh, everyone's been in, uh, been through a lot, and they've all been amazingly adaptable. And uh, can't say enough about them. And uh, it's important we at least remain competitive with our peers. And I will provide all of you with a full breakdown of everyone's um, uh, salary. Yep, and Jim, you had mentioned that they had gotten a two percent increase last year as well. Uh, same amount, two and a half percent. Yeah. Correct. Yep. All right, then do I have a motion to authorize this salary increase? I'll move it. I'd like to also say that um, <clears throat> I'll, I will move it with enthusiasm. Um, <laughs> the work that has been done through with this village, with inside Village Hall, the police department, and public works through the pandemic has been amazing. Our uh, absenteeism has been incredibly low the team stayed healthy um this and so we have a lot to be proud of and and a lot to be grateful for so um i'm I want to move this i i enthusiastically second that yeah. wow well said bob <laughs> yeah. yeah and although i can't second the motion i will heartily second the comments of <laughs> trustee underhill and trustee I'm now I'll, I'll third the comments <laughs> So uh, I've lost track. Who I'm? I'm so over enthused. That. I think we're all voting. I think yes. We're all done. Yes. We're all voting yes. yes. And Mary Ann, would you share our message on behalf of all the incredibly hard worker? And there's a one of them who um, I couldn't do it without you. So thank you. You, you. you probably should formally ask for the yeas and nays. Okay. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. So you got that for the minutes. Enthusias enthusiastically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Marianne, of course, is amazingly um, patient with me. I am... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we're, we we're all, all with you, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Oh, you can okay. strike that from the minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, then we have paddle court lighting, Jim. If you want to, oh, this is something we needed to do, basically, and this season is upon us. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, so it's it's approving seventy two hundred dollars. I think it's um, seven. Yes, yeah, seventy two hundred dollars. And this just goes again, especially well, we've been making a concerted effort to uh, systematically improve the 
uh, recreation facilities, and we've been doing that at the paddle huts, and we've made several improvements. And what we've learned, of course, with COVID is that people really do appreciate the uh, outdoor facilities even that much more, and they continue to be very heavily utilized. So. Um, and Stephen's been really helpful in this regard. We've really tried to work and prioritize, prioritize our capital needs based on hearing from the membership and adding another, another LED um, uh, lighted court is, um, is that priority. So it's, um, it's money well spent. And, that, and, that, and those money would come from our unassigned fund balance. And Jim, just <clears throat> as a kind of little separate question but related to this, is there a way, sometimes I come off the Bronx River Parkway or go by the paddle courts and it's 10 o'clock at night and no one's there and the lights are on. Yes. Is, is there a way that we sh should or can be monitored? Because there's so much light pollution that comes out of that. Is there a way that we can have some way of, of making sure those lights go off at a particular time? Sure. And they are on a timer. That was another one of those improvements where we spent, um, uh, a couple of thousand dollars to have them rewired so um, you're probably coming off the highway before 10 o'clock because uh, <laughs> at the end of the evening and at the end of paddle those lights are off automatically do they have good um, like a baffle system that keeps the light on the courts instead of spilling over we try to be very strategic with that with the electrician we're very sensitive to have yes that foot candle yeah uh, pointed downward to the court yep Yes. And these are going to be, the way I read it, more energy saving and too, question, from the as old. LED, as LED, yeah. um, yes, yep, very energy efficient. Okay, so do I have a motion to authorize that purchase of new lighting? Motion. And a second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. And finally, our last um, resolution, Jim, do you want to mention it's um, sadly about uh, flooding? Sure. Um, yep. Second to last. So the right. So this is. Uh, you have a copy of the the uh, resolution, which is uh, to uh, one uh, authorize the submittal of an application to uh, Westchester County through the uh, Westchester County's Stormwater Management Advisory Board uh, for consideration of funding a study, uh, what we'll call Phase One study, engineering study for the portion of the Bronx River Corridor that uh, exists at uh, Paxton Avenue and Parkway Road, uh, and that the, uh, secondly, that the village also uh, agreed to commit funding either through cash or in-kind services to uh, up to 50% of that, uh, up to the, for that study. Uh, and again, the, the principal purposes of the study and our request to Westchester County is to review the past studies that have been done uh, at this location. There are at least two. Um, develop both short and long-term solutions to the flooding problem, and then evaluate and prioritize those alternatives, as well as provide a detailed cost estimate for those alternatives. So once this uh, scope of work is finalized the county would assist us in putting it out to bid to qualified engineers uh, we review those costs uh, and then if we move forward with this phase one uh, we would use their cost breakdown to then um, develop a further construction uh, analysis piece but uh, it seems like this is absolutely the time for it and and i should say the um uh, the team at Westchester County has been most uh, supportive of this, and we currently are on the Stormwater Advisory Board's um, agenda, and we were for this even before this most horrific uh, flooding that took place uh, with Hurricane Ida. So, Yeah, timing. We did put this in before Ida, and now we need it more than ever, quite frankly. Yeah. So, yeah, for sure. Do I have a motion to authorize the application submittal? So moved. And a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. And Jim, you did add, I was wrong, you added yes. one more um, yep. that um, I didn't. Um, we do a food scrap. All right. Yes, um, yep, food scrap. Who wants to take yeah. the lead on it? The Green Committee people who are still here will really like this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why they're still here. <laughs> and this is uh, thanks to them and thanks to um, Helen. 
uh, who wanted to get it on tonight's agenda. So Helen, do you want to talk about it before I ask for the motion? Well, I, I just think, you know, again, this is, this is um, a program that we've been studying for quite some time. We had an excellent presentation. Was that over a year ago? Yes. By the, uh, the, uh, the people from Scarsdale who have really done a great program and thought it through very carefully. And I've just heard so much enthusiastic response from people in the village who really want this to happen. And, um, you know, this idea that we collect so much extra uh, food that is just going down our drains, why not um, really put it in a place that, that can be used and, and recycled and, and um, used as organic matter. So we, it, we've kind of had this on hold because of all the Palumbo Place um, and the DPW construction, which has still left some issues unresolved, but we just wanted to um, pass the resolution you know, establishing the, the program so we get that done and then um, finalize the logistical issues as, as uh, as we get the, the walkthrough and, and visualize the, the space. But I think um, it's, it sounds like a great program that the village really uh, will make good use of. Yeah, and Alan, I'm not sure if you were here for that piece, but the board, when we were going through Palumbo Place, I did discuss with the board some uh, suggestions on uh, where we would have the, um, the drop-off site located, which I, think, which I think makes sense. So as part of our layout, I'll, um, I'll include that on it. and. Um, I think that would that would. Um, I was that not would. a trustee yet um, when when you all made the presentation presenting this um, new program, but it was very compelling, and I'm really happy that the village is going to continue its efforts to adopt it and work with um, Jim and the staff to figure out the logistics on the parking, as he just said. Um, but it was, um, I think, I've gotten a lot of feedback as well um, from a lot of residents that they're, when's it coming, when's it coming? So I think it will be well received when it finally gets uh, put into place. Thank you. All right, then, uh, Helen, would you like to move the resolution? I will enthusiastically move. <laughs> yeah. I'll second it. Second. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Motion passes. Maybe, maybe. Uh, I'm sorry, Mayor, maybe. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe before we close, if you don't mind, maybe I'll just make one other um, public service announcement, if you, if you will, just regarding our FEMA resources. Do you mind just for a second? Go ahead. Yeah, sure, so, uh, sure. you know, just as a reminder to, to everyone, uh, for those impacted that did suffer um, severe damage and severe losses, we have been sending out some email alerts on some of the resources that FEMA has. We'll continue to do that. Um, most of the information that we've been sending out, we also tried to put on our website. So if someone clicks on the village's uh, red banner on the top of our homepage, you'll be able to see some of those resources. Most recently, uh, we had sent out some information today um, uh, that is uh, some funding, low interest loans that are available through the Small Business Administration. Um, and you don't actually have to be a small business owner to, um, to get that assistance. And then I received something from our congressman uh, that he was also going to be doing a, um, uh, a virtual seminar on um, actually tomorrow evening between 6 and 7 p.m. And that information is on the website. And then, of course, uh, probably the nearest site where residents can go for FEMA assistance, a one-stop shopping, if you will, is over at um, uh, the um, Justice Building over in the town of, uh, or rather in the village of Amaranek, uh, which, as everyone knows, was hit. Uh, impressively hard and um, uh, so anyway that's that sorry yeah I thought the one interesting thing that the small business administration is going to give loans to residents and that's probably the biggest message that um, we can get out to people that that it's another avenue of money so thank you Jim and trustees anyone else like to well, mirror I just had a quick comment I would like to remind the residents of um, Bronxville that the village is now publishing a news a monthly online newsletter uh, it's entitled one square mile we've mentioned it before but we would encourage all residents to sign up and any and any other interested parties you can sign up on the website and thanks to you, yep. we Thank got you. that going. Thank, Thank you, you, Mary. Also, um, we hadn't mentioned, member the police barbecue. Do you want me to just alert oh, the residents? Sure. There's, it's, Thank word you. has gotten out of that the police, um, Bronxville police, along with the Tuckahoe police, are hosting a barbecue here at the village on Saturday, September 25th, between 12:30 and 2:30, and all the residents are encouraged to come. That's Village Hall. Village Hall, right. or around. 
by the, by the police. Yeah, and Jim, we should yes. probably put out a, an e-alert to invite everybody to the barbecue. We absolutely will, and it was included in our newsletter, yes. too, if people check your newsletter, which is also check available it. online. <laughs> Thank so, you, Mayor. Thank you. Any other thing we might have missed, Bill? Yeah, yeah just uh, very briefly, uh, I'd like to report to the trustees that Jim Palmer and I had the uh, privilege of uh, representing uh, the board and the village at uh, the Bronxville High School senior classes, September 11 uh, Memorial, which was actually on Friday, September 10th. And I think that uh, everyone, including the senior class and the social studies teacher, whose, whose name I sadly forgotten, but but who deserves, I think, a lot of credit for organizing it. It was, it was a very nice ceremony. I'd like to also commend uh, our firefighters. Um, was it Bill Meyer? I, it might have been, okay. yeah, yeah I, I don't want to say yay or nay. But um, also, I think there were at least 10 members of the police department who showed up uh, in their uh, dress uniforms, and, and I know that at least half of them would have been there on their own time. And uh, I think it again uh, shows the sense of, uh, of community uh, that, uh, that we have. And thank you also, of course, to the Eastchester firefighters who were, who were there. And then just very briefly, uh, Jim Palmer, Stuart Bagatosh, and I, and uh, someone, and, and, and certain other representatives did have a meeting last week on uh, solar uh, zoning, uh, uh, code revisions uh, we're going to try to present something uh, to the board in that regard as some of the you know, cleanup zoning issues uh, as well as I, I I also want to check with Paul Taft uh, uh, building uh, inspector about uh, whether particularly in light of the recent flood damage whether there's anything in the stormwater runoff drainage uh, provisions of, of the village's construction codes which are largely taken from state codes but whether any of those might need to be updated or could be profitably tightened or, or revisited thank you. thank you thank you thank you bill any other comments trustees jim palmer um thank you for your yes. tireless job during ida uh, emails coming through 10 o'clock at night. I'm heading down to the school. Um, yeah. yeah, thank you. You did an amazing yeah. job, and yeah. you were here to Bob's. Uh, <clears throat> the messages were coming from Village Hall at all hours of the day and night. So thank you. Um, absolutely. And thank you to your wife and family as well. Thank you. And Marianne, who gets a call from me at late at night. <laughs> no, that's like, another story. While, uh, while I'm driving. Uh, Marianne and I, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, when they say it takes a village. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, what a nice way and a fitting way to end this month's meeting. So do I have a motion to adjourn our meeting? Enthusiastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And a second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And we will be back the Tuesday after Columbus Day, which is the 12th? Yes. Sir. Yes. So we will see everyone on October 12th. And thank you. Thank you.